Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, Attorney Savania DeBarros. Hey, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of What Are You Sporting About podcast. I am your host, Savania DeBarros, the protector of athletes. I'm also the founder and principal attorney of S.L. DeBarros Law Firm, where we represent six and seven figure business owners and athletes in business. Today, I have a fellow podcaster on the show with me, Ms. Kristen Olson. And how are you doing, girl? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Before we jump in too deep, I'm just going to give a small little spiel about who you are. And then we're going to jump into some deep questions for this Women's History Month, which I'm so excited about. So it's amazing to have you on the, on the platform, especially for this, because you're doing some amazing things. So guys, just to catch you up a little bit to speed about Miss Olson, she is an experienced and innovative marketing professional with 18 plus years experience in brand development and management and particular expertise with integrated marketing strategies, strategic territory management and relationship building. Now, she also has experienced um, that encompasses strong work ethic and commitment to organizational objectives within highly competitive athletic apparel market industries. She is a tactical planner and a team builder with the ability to attract key players and develop lasting business relationships which I can definitely attest to because we have been connected <laughs> ever since I appeared on her podcast, Turmeric and Tequila, which is an amazing, amazing show. So welcome again to the show, Kristen. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. And I, I, I think it's worth noting that um, we actually just met off LinkedIn. I don't know if I can't even remember if it was a connect or a connect, but it's so nice. Like I said, I think it's always affirmations from universe, God, Madonna, whatever you believe uh, that things are in motion when right. The good, like the good humans are coming into your world. So uh, it's been, it's been a pleasure working thus far. And I know we have some big things ahead. Absolutely. And okay. Before I, we go into the whole spill, So if you guys are listening to this, you don't, you can't see me, right? But I am wearing one of Kristen's shirts, Graceful Disruption, which is so necessary. So like I said, we are in Women's History Month in March and Graceful Disruption is just so beautiful because we need a lot of women, women like you, women like me, who are moving getting up, moving out of their own way, telling fear no, and disrupting the status quo. So where can people get these shirts? Because I really like this. Yes, and it fits. It looks great. Nothing makes me happier than see my fellow varsity humans uh, repping the cause. It's so deeply meaningful to me. So my heart is smiling. And I appreciate you rocking it on your own cast. Um, Absolutely. Everything is at turmericandtequila.com. The store is pretty bleak right now. Thankfully so. We've, we're almost out of like everything. Um, but I'm going to be, we're going to be partnering up with a another online situation that basically prints our stuff for us. And we're going to be streamlining sort of some of that process. And we'll have a lot more stuff available. So I really appreciate everybody that's already ordered and, and supported the cause. And we're going to have more really cool things coming. So turmeric and tequila, I think it's backslash shop. Uh, turmericandtequila.com backslash shop. But you can get the goods. All right. So is there anything that I missed opening you up, telling people about who you are um, that you may want to add? Uh, yeah, well, I appreciate that wonderful intro, by the way. It's always nice to hear like, oh, yeah, I've done some things like it's, it's good to know. Um, but I, alongside that, I think the baseline, the why behind the podcast was really coming from the athletic situation, which I know you can relate to being competitive in sports and then competitive in the professional world. The podcast was really birthed from some of the smoke and mirrors in both of those worlds. And we really wanted to bring some transparency to the game. As you said, graceful disruption. Uh, grace is something I've continued to work on as a competitive athlete because we have much rather just run through the wall and fix it right now versus you know go through a process so that's strategically in the, the in the disruption part um so mainly through line is that it to make was kind of birth from all those things coming together and like all right we're gonna start telling the truth on what's going on out here love it love it and one of the things i told kristen before when we first met on her podcast is that her 
the name of her podcast are two things I love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love turmeric. I almost cook everything with turmeric. Yes. I love tequila. Well, I love margaritas and margaritas are made with tequila. So, we'll you know, hey. Um, so I want to ask you, though, what does the question, what are you sporting about mean to you? Um, well, I, again, I found you on LinkedIn or vice versa or something. We, and so in the second I saw that, I always love working with my fellow athletes. I think there's just something you get at a young age, like commitment, time management, teamwork, um, uh, responsibility. Cause it is like a full-time job when you're in college. Yeah. It's no joke. And you're, I mean, you're a zero year old when you're in college, you're still trying to get it. So it's a major responsibility to take on amongst many awards and gifts that come alongside it. But when I read, what are you sporting about? To me, that was like, what's your lifestyle like? Cause everything yeah. to me relates back to the field and like sports analogies. So my lens for, for what are you sporting about was just like, how are you living? Like what's going on mm -hmm. and how does that kind of, you know, work and coincide with your, I want to say competitive life, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great perspective. What, <laughs> what is your lifestyle like? Because I don't think a lot of people think about their lifestyle. And then on top of that, how much, do you like and appreciate the current lifestyle that you that you have, right? And so I think uh, we're always thinking of the next best thing. What can we do to get this? But we're not thinking, you know, how once I get to that next platform, how does it contribute to the lifestyle that I have versus the life I really want to have? So I I love that, Kristen. So as my fellow podcaster, businesswoman a woman who's making history. I do want to ask you though, how have you been able to use your podcast to make impact for your listeners or viewers? Yeah. Well, I think the the real answer is, I don't know. I just, I started this and it's the cliche answer of like, you know, if it, if one person hears this and it matters, then, um, that's enough. I have been very fortunate to have some really great feedback, even, you know, comments on Instagram. Some of our, our, our conversations seem simple, like the choice to not have kids or the choice to, you know, approach status quo in a different way. I've had really in, like incredible response saying, I've never heard anything like this. I'm really happy that there's other people like, uh, you know, that had my similar thought process. So like affirmations like that have been huge. Um, and then I didn't, you know, as strategic as a marketing branding professional, uh, as I am with marketing branding, this was just two truths in my world, turmeric and tequila and the juxtaposition of all things. So I didn't know if it was going to stick. I, I didn't think a lot of people knew about turmeric, but I'm finding that's completely false. Um, most people love turmeric and then they have like some really brutal tequila story. So I'm getting <laughs> things like that. So, which is kind of what fits. So I don't, I don't really know, fully know the impact and not that I'm not getting positive feedback, but I'm, I'm hoping that the ripple in the water, however small it might be or however big mm -hmm. is that it's it's just hitting the right people and and from the get-go I just had blind faith that start this start talking about it you know we're new to casting we're in the mix now but starting out you know I didn't know what the hell I was doing and we're still yeah. you know still the whole like landscape is a work in progress right um <laughs> I mean, it's changing so fast. There is no like true, like I want to say like hard and pro at podcasting because it's evolving so quickly. Um, so I, I just have faith that, it, that the real impact that I really care about is that it's getting to the people that need to hear what we're talking about. And for that, I hope it streamlines some of their process in their life. Now, so as a, as a young woman in business who is making history in her own right, what are the conversations that you want people to hear and really be able to grasp a hold of that and say, wow, I can, I can change my mindset based on this particular conversation or a piece of this conversation. So when they're listening to turmeric and tequila, what is the impact that you hope you're making in someone's life? Well, we're here. We say um, to you know change the world one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time, and to inspire positive radical social change. So that so we want to gracefully disrupt what's going on in this world, and really just bringing light to to real conversation. However, that really starts with our own disrupting of our own thoughts. You know, the voice, your voice in your head is the only voice you hear all the time and the most your entire life. So that's your yeah. first influencer. That's your biggest impactful thing. So we have to sit back and see, like, all right, what are the systemic situations or conversations that are happening in my mind because of society? whether it's around race, gender, socioeconomic status, um, what I should be doing in general. So I, I, I really hope the takeaway for most people is to sit back and disrupt some of these things that are making you unhappy. Like kind of like what you alluded to from the echo. So many people are walking around, you know, unhappy or wishing it for something else or, or waiting for the next thing. And it's like, all right, what are our blessings right here? And 
why do I want some of things? Do I actually want some of these things? Is that going to make me happy? And then from there, dialing into what you really want. And I think if we internally can become more happier ourselves, that's how we collectively become happier as a whole, alongside some of these major conversations around race, gender, socioeconomic status, you know, Mm -hmm. all the things that that are important, but it really did start within. Yeah. So I want to touch on your interview with me that you've done. So if you guys are following Turk and Tequila, make sure you go and search for my episode, okay? Uh, Open mic. And we actually talked about some of those issues around race and status quo and systemic issues that this country is facing. One thing that, that I know from the sports perspective is there's still so many systemic issues, right, in sports and with athletes and how they view themselves. Um, what would be some advice that you can take from some of the other conversations that you've had with me and, and with other guests on your show to say, hey, why don't you start by doing the X thing or thinking of X thing and implementing that in your life so that now you can disrupt what those systemic issues or rules have been so you can live more gracefully, so you can have more impact in your own individual life outside of the cloned identity of an athlete? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that the most important first step you can do is join a team or maybe if it's not sports, get into, you know, acting or um, music or whatever your passion is, because mm-hmm. those things I'm, I'm such an advocate for uh, fostering life skills through sports or activity, again, theater, music, whatever, because then you go there and then you immediately have this common denominator with people that don't look like you, that aren't yeah. from the same place you are from, that probably don't believe the same things you like you're exposed to people you probably would never co- cross paths with. However, you already have a common um, uh, denominator and a commonality and, and a, a place of interest. Sports and fitness and lacrosse and CrossFit, all these things have brought my the best friends in my life into my world. And a lot of us have nothing in common. We don't look alike. And yet we have so much in common when, once you peel back that surface layer of like our outer casing um, that our heart, our core values, so many things are similar. So I think yeah. step one is getting into the mix and being around people that don't look like you apart. Cause I'm not big on like telling people what to do, what have you, but I think if they can go experience it themselves, they'll be a firsthand believer because they've experienced it. And then from there, it's, you know, even in college, you learn how to cook differently. You learn how to set your alarm differently. I mean, there's, I, I call these like little varsity pro tips where it's, you know, you get to be around all these different cultures and way of doing things better that you can collectively bring back. And then I think that whether you're intentional or not, that will ripple in the pond of how you, you know, do things with your kids or your family or your friends. Once you like go home from college or you, you aren't around your fitness friends or the, the friends you made through that activity. Um, and then when you're intentional about if you want to do like a podcast or something like that, then you have real experience to speak from saying like, you know what, I actually, I experienced what diversity was like. I experienced, or I'd see how someone that didn't look like me had to experience their day versus my day. Um, and then t- just further unpacking it from there. But I think that initial firsthand experience is really, really critical. I love how you say varsity pro tips. And I've heard you use, you use varsity humans, varsity, varsity, varsity. And it just has me thinking about, you know, in high school. All you want to do is make the varsity team, yeah. right? But you've been using it in the context of humanity and growth and development, you know, being at the varsity level. So we we compare varsity with being the best, right? We want to be on the top, on the top team. And so taking that into account um, as a being a varsity human and the conversation we've been having about lifestyle and being able to foster certain skills through sports, why do you think it's been difficult for athletes to realize that they're not actually living a varsity level uh, life in spite of the fact that they actually may be in the pro level sports? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I like that. It's it's, it's, it's people are saying like varsity and JV and it's like that sounds like exclusive versus inclusive and it's not it's inclusive and it's 100% a mindset versus a, my judgment on you or your judgment on me or whatever that doesn't matter because even if you are you know you, you roll up in a green Lamborghini and you've got the pro title and everything that you thought might make you happy and yet you know maybe you're cheating on your spouse or you're um and it's not an open relationship. I know it's 2021. So people have their own things, but like you're kind of living out outside of your core values, whatever that may be. And when you really sit with yourself and you're like, mm, am I the man or woman um, or, or whatever that I want to be? 
or or am I just appearing that way to the world, to Instagram, to my teammates, whatever else? So the, the varsity commentary is really about me knowing, like for, I can only really speak about myself, me knowing I am in pursuit of my best life. I am most purposeful to this world. Do I have JV moments where I'm off bat? A hundred percent, probably mm-hmm. more than the varsity ones, but it's that mm-hmm. constant mindset of like, come on, are we doing the most right now? Can we, can we get back on track? Can we, you know, be productive, be useful to this world, etc. It's like, it's a constant mind check for me. And when you start to surround yourself with people like yourself and you see like, Oh, look at now she's doing this. Okay. Now we're getting on this. So well, that was a failure that I saw, but look how she's coming. Like you can get around mm-hmm. it. And it's, I think this constant evolution of like varsity JV moments, but it's you holding yourself accountable. So that, so yeah. again, and that goes back to inner peace. If it looks good, that's fine. But if there's something off inside and you're not really challenging yourself to live in that, in that manner, you know, that the rest of the world, I really do think eventually sees that. Yeah. Oh my God. I love, I love that, um, that conversation because uh, everything that you said made me think about the woman, the businesswoman, or the the female athlete, or the former female athlete, or the woman who used to do all the things and now she's lost her identity completely. She's stay at home mom or whatever. You know what I mean? And it's so important, and I, and I definitely want to highlight this, especially during Women's History Month. It's so important that women find ways to disrupt uh, the status quo of what they've been told about themselves. So I want to ask you, what what have been the key things personally for you um, that you've been able to latch on to, to first off, recognize your value and to go after what you want in spite of how scary it may be? Yeah, I think coming I think most competitive athletes, you know, whether your career is through high school and competitive or college, or maybe you have the opportunity to go professional. I think at some point it really does end as, as much as I hate admitting that, um, or I should say it transitions into something else. Yeah. But in that transition, you have to let go of, I was a collegiate lacrosse player. So when I graduated, it was like, I fortunately, well, I, I don't know if I'd say fortunately, but I guess, fortunately, tore my ACL in 2001. And so the second, and I had traveled 2000 miles from Colorado to go to a D1 top 20 school, walk on, turn down some scholarships. Like it was a whole process to get there. And I was, I had to, I mean, I was a bench warmer freshman year. So I very much was, and I knew that was going to happen, but I had to earn my way onto the field. Finally Mm -hmm. got back, um, tore my ACL. And it was a very, it was a deep awakening early on of like, Oh God, my identity is stripped away. What do I do? I went into depression. I lost like 35 pounds. Like there's no tequila. There's certainly no turmeric then on a college budget. Um, we, didn't, we had no ballot. So I had to kind of learn that where I think a lot of collegiate athletes, once you graduate, you're like, Oh shit, you have this loss of identity. You don't, I'm a lacrosse player. I'm a basketball player. I'm whatever. And then you have to move on. So I think it's, that is applicable to the conversation. Now I'm a stay at home mom. I'm a lawyer. I'm a, I'm a wife. I'm an entrepreneur. I think all of these, again, these are like ideas from society of like how I should be that I cling to. So society, the world understands me. I think the graceful disruption is us letting go of all those identities. And in, in the same time, hanging on to pieces of them. Like, yes, I am uh, a lacrosse player. I'm an athlete. I'm a competitive crossfitter and I'm a dog mom and I'm a philanthropist and I love to cook lasagna or whatever. Uh, I'm tumor and tequila. Like I'm, I love to party. Like we're, we're going to have fun if you're hanging out with me. So it's, it, it's not really having to box yourself into this. It's kind of being all things and mostly just letting it go with yourself. Like we think we need these deep identities yeah. and we don't because we're all true. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and it's also the balance part of it too, because when you start trying to fit into certain boxes or labels that other people have for you, it's more constraining to truly live. Cause I speak a lot about your purpose, you know, finding your purpose, living in your purpose, removing fear so that you can operate in your purpose. But if you're so confined to how other people have defined you and allow that to now um, disrupt your own life, because you're not living a true life. You're not being authentic to yourself because you're, you're so busy uh, telling other people that what they've said or how they described or characterized you is true and it depletes your happiness. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of women, unfortunately, um, that that narrative has started early earlier for us. We're always the last to have the opportunities out there for our male counterparts. Um, I'm actually happy in that you were able to bounce back from your injury because normally that would be, that would be a hard situation to recover from. And especially for a female athlete, you know, there's so many other opportunities out there, but I think sometimes from the athletic perspective and female, 
that only female perspective, um, the mindset is so is so different because you fought you fought against an entire institution, you know, centuries of rules and regulations and downplay of females that you know you're not good enough for it, right? So how did you how can you put yourself in the right headspace to say I have the willpower, I have the ability to move beyond what is what is right now so that I can create something amazing for my future. Well, I, I, as much as, you know, I want to take credit for things and, and, you know, we think we're in control. Uh, I think <laughs> universe, God, Madonna, whatever you believe has a sick sense of humor. And I, even looking yeah. back, I'm the oldest of four and I have three younger brothers. So from day one, I was kind of in this leadership role, whether they mm-hmm. wanted to follow me or not podcast, but, um, in this leadership role. And it was like, in you know, I, I I'm 40. I, I grew up high school was like, um, 90, what is it? Uh, five to 99. And so back then like there was, still wasn't a lot of stuff for women as archaic as that yeah. sounds like it was a minute ago. Like, you know, you don't see like women's wrestling, not that I was wrestling, but like all these opportunities for girls. And I remember my mom saying to me, like we had swimming and cheerleading. You're so lucky that you get to do lacrosse and you get to do these things. And my brothers would go play stuff. And it was a constant thing for mm-hmm. me. Me. I also just think my personality where it's like, I was like, well, and me too. I want to do this. Well, I can do this too. Like, I didn't want to play football, but I would go like put on their pads and we go play in the yard or because I just wanted to be part of what they were. And I remember yeah. my first real piece of like feeling inequality was my grandfather talking about baseball. Like, you know, it's like the boys could, you know, be major leaguers and make a lot of money. And I was like, well, I could do that or something along that lines. And, and he was like, no, girls don't do that. And I was like, oh, the comparison. Yeah. yeah but Prior to this day, I can still feel like mm, the angst. That, so w- once, you know, fast forward to injury and everything else, there was no other way. There was no way I was not going to get better and get back yeah. in it. And you know, I think that was always part of God, Universe, and Madonna's plan for me that here you are. We're going <laughs> to rough you up early on because here's what you need to be doing. So mm-hmm. it, you know, having that early kind of reflection on to how I grew up, how things that had happened and where I am now, it's kind of like, well, of course, or I don't know that I had a lot of choice. Like this is what it was supposed to be and, and what I'm supposed to be doing it's just so weird and we've said this before how similar you and I are because I'm also the eldest of four (laughs) you know um sisters huh was that did you have all brothers or sisters too no two brothers one sister okay okay um and we both have this determination spirit like regardless it doesn't matter how down we may get about something we still have this determination like either I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to prove myself prove to myself that I can get up and and make it right well what about a woman who's never who who wasn't born with that self-driven personality that will and perseverance to keep moving in spite of like what is the advice that you can give to the female athlete or the female businesswoman who's like I don't have that same acumen I don't I don't know where to pull that from you know, yeah. what can they do to start to change, help themselves to change their mindset in that, in that, um, in that way. So they can start finding the drive and the determination to get up in spite of. Yeah. I think another great question. Um, it, I love, like I said, I always love my fellow athletes, but they're, they're like us. It's like, all right, do more. And you're yeah. like, you're so high. I like when the, the opposites of us come in and they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's chill. Calm down. <laughs> motivated on your purpose, like soul session. We're here for all of it, but also relax. Like mm-hmm. it'll all get done. It's this and that. I think everybody is like intuitive and or spiritual or religious or whatever kind of like motivates you within your family, your kids, mm-hmm. your sleep, sleep on it, whatever. I think that's where you can really draw from the checkpoint of, am I really doing what I want to be doing? It doesn't necessarily have to be that you have to go, you know, D1 and and win an NCAA championship or go to the CrossFit games or own your own law firm, or maybe Mm -hmm. it's you're the most impactful as, you know, a mom staying at home. The most important thing we need right now are are young humans (laughs) being advised accordingly to get up, you know, apply for a job, you call back, like little things that we need early on coaching of like, okay, this is actually important. So I think it's, it's important for anyone. If you're, if you're not like the super competitive or run through the wall, you know, like we are great, go find people like us. Cause then I love the juxtaposition of working together. You will fill gaps that I don't have. And I will fill gaps right. that you don't have. So I, I think if there's a real opportunity to connect, which also we need in 2021, but really just any, any intern motivation, having that mindset of you can have the life you want in, you know, working harder, doing more, or just like focusing, praying, getting in your best self like that, that life, I think knowing 
and conceptualizing the life you want is enough motivation really for anyone to start to make little steps to move towards that direction. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, I'm reminded of, oh, my God, I'm drawing a blank. One of the former guests that was on the show, Tanika Rubin, Tanika Rubin. And um, I just saw a post from her over the weekend about four types of people you need in your life. It makes me think about this conversation. So for the woman who don't know where to pull that from, sometimes you you may not have that type of characteristic, but the fact that you can bring other people in to support you in that way is so instrumental. It's so instrumental, not just to success in the general term, but to your own well-being. So one of the things she was saying, like you need someone to empower you, someone to uh, challenge you. Um, I think she said like the motivator and the cheerleader. Yeah, it's so yeah. true. Yeah. You need people to say, "Girl, keep going, keep going." But you also need someone to to make you realize that you can still do and be more than what this thing is. Is the challenger, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, I love. I'll, 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 I don't think I got that one. I'll definitely listen to it. And I think that it's important. What's important about that is I completely agree. And that can be different people. I think oftentimes we expect that from one person, our significant other, right. or our coach, or a parent, you got to understand this, it probably should be different humans, like different humans that can diversify that thought and give you different feedback from different angles. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. And I don't want to be disrespectful to your time. So where can people find Kristen Olson, personal brand or turmeric and tequila? Go ahead and drop the the digits, the social yes. digits. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you, if you like what you hear, uh, come come join us. We have a growing, thriving community of disruptors like Savonia. And please check out our cast. It was a really amazing conversation. We did it right around the resurrection at the Capitol. So we got into a little bit of legal and some heavier combo. And it was it was wonderful. Um, but you can find me on Instagram, Madonna's Hero. As I said, I'm a huge Madonna fan. She's one of the original. If you don't love the music, she's one of the original disruptors. You should dig into that. Um, and then my consulting company is KO Alliance. Turmeric and Tequila is the podcast. Any one of those, it's just the name on Instagram and Facebook and everything. You can find the other three uh, links. And you know what, Kristen, before I let you go, because we didn't even talk about your consulting, which is so important, right? <laughs> uh, so really quick, though, what made you interested in marketing and, and you know, and advertising consulting is... It seems yeah, so confusing yeah. to me. <laughs> well, this, I know it's necessary. This is why we would be a good team because we're totally different brains, like totally. analytical. You're, I mean, you're structured and organized, and I'm more like creative, and I'm pretty organized for a creative, but I abstract and I'm very visual. Um, but again, mm -hmm. this is where you build out your like life team. This is why it works. Uh, but yes, I start. I got into marketing and branding early because I, coming off of my collegiate experience, I was ready to not have a boss. My coach was great, but I, again, I was the oldest of four. My parents were like you know, do your thing. And then uh, in came a coach and I was like, Oh, okay. This is a lot of yeah. you telling me what to do. So I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to be an entrepreneur. I don't care if I fail. I live under a bridge. We're going to try this. Started a lacrosse company and, and then CrossFit took off. So I was competing and it was kind of mirrored the culture of lacrosse. So we started to help some companies activate in the lacrosse and CrossFit space. And I just learned marketing and branding from there. And I, I, I had the pleasure of being on the athletic side and the business side. So I had this unique perspective yeah. on how to merge those worlds. So I started KO Alliance and we help companies activate in the fitness. And now it's really the lifestyle space because our young humans are getting so much more privy to the health, health and wellness game. It's not just our elite athletes trying to do like human optimization. It's just our, our, you know, our kiddos, which is awesome. So yeah. we help companies get into space and we help with uh, influencers and mutually beneficial strategic relationships, sponsorships, the whole nine. That's what's up. So if you guys are looking for consulting and marketing services, definitely make sure you hit up my girl, Kristen Olson. She is amazing. I love watching her on social media and I'm so happy and blessed that you, that you can, you know, connect it with me. It was just yes, so yes. out of the blue. Uh, your message that I received was like, hey, I don't even know how we met, but would you mind coming on to my podcast? <laughs> and you were yeah. gracious enough to do so. Like, that's huge. You never know who's going to hit you up on LinkedIn or whatever. So I I appreciate you taking the message. So we're we're moving in the right direction. I have full, yes. full faith. Absolutely moving in the right direction. And this just goes to show people too, and back to a point that you made here today was, Go and meet other people, you know, get on teams and do things and travel because you have no idea how much you have in common with people that you've never known. 
you know, your entire life, who look different than you, who speak different languages. It's amazing how much we all have in common, but I think this world has been so focused on the differences, but when you really get down to the bottom of it, the differences aren't really that much, really. And let's just be honest about it, yeah. So we're so good at the exterior, um, which is, it's a valiant conversation to tell and we, we got to get into it. But really, again, it's like you strip it away, we all play the same. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Kristen, for coming on to the show again. Uh, guys, make sure you get your shirt. Let me show you again. This Mine is Graceful Disruption, okay? And I have the crop that go and put on a, a sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> they do shrink heads up. On, What's that? I said they do shrink heads up. <laughs> yes. And Krista has on turmeric and tequila shirt, which I love. And it, what color is yours? It's like I think mine's the same right? color as yours. It's like, the, it's like a, I think it's called charcoal blue. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So yours look a lot deeper. Maybe is yours gray? Yeah, mine just look a little bit darker blue. Yeah. There's no real way of knowing. I don't know. Maybe this lighting is just super aggressive. Right. I might even be getting a fan right now. It's right on me. <laughs> so, <no. laughs> it's all good. So make sure you guys go and order your shirts at turmericandtequila.com. Follow her on social media at Turmeric Tequila and at Madonna's Hero. Um, look, I want you guys to make sure you go and get my book because it is life changing. I am now officially, all right, da -da 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 drum roll, an international author. Yes. So, yeah. Isn't that something? Hell so, yeah, book, absolutely. Man, get your book, What Are You Sporting About? at prosportlawyer.com forward slash best selling dash book or you can go to amazon barnes and noble anywhere where books are sold and get your copy make sure that you also follow me on instagram at what are you sporting about and until the next time guys it was a pleasure to be here to support educate and guide you to your next level with miss Kristen olsen we'll check you guys later Peace. thank you so much <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on What Are You Sporting About? podcast. Make sure to visit our website, prosportlawyer.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our book, What Are You Sporting About? Attorney Savania DeBarros is available for private consulting at S ldebarros.com. And remember, we're here to educate, support, and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something.